Coming up, Technum's sleek twin proves itself as a trainer. And can the impossible turn really be done in your airplane? ASI finds out. Great question. Plus, general aviation pilots helping critters get back on their flippers. AOBA Live this week begins in just a moment. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Alyssa Cobb. Things are looking up out there. Traffic numbers are high, especially in general and business aviation. Now that's right, the rebound is strong. According to data from FlightAware, business aviation is up 81% from last year at this time, pretty low threshold, but it's even up 11.5% compared to the same period in 2019. That's measuring only turbine part 91 and 135 operations. So I'm on the road this week with AOP president and CEO Mark Baker. We've been out and about uh, in the middle and the you know, southeastern part of the country talking to some aviation influencers and trying to understand what's happening in the marketplace, uh, uh, particularly around business aviation. And w what we've seen and heard on the frequencies, seen on the ramps, is a lot of activity by light turbine uh, aircraft, turboprops, light jets, uh, but also some high-end piston uh, aircraft out and about conducting business. But one thing we haven't seen much of are the really big intercontinental jets. The Gulfstreams and the Falcons of the world uh, are um, seem to be in the hangars because of COVID. You know, international travel restrictions have meant that a lot of corporations that might typically be making a lot of international trips are not doing so because of those restrictions. Um, but regardless, uh, when it comes to domestic travel, though, there is a, a, a big uptick in activity. And it's really nice to see. And a lot of that uptick in activity is also reflected in the demand for used aircraft. Aircraft. If you've uh, tried to find a good used airplane, you already know that the market is hot. VRAF calls it a feeding frenzy. Frenzy. The piston fixed wing market is up 15 to 35 com percent compared to last year. Twin engine aircraft, which had been in the doldrums, are also up in demand. The Baron 55 at the top of that list. Light to medium-sized jets are selling fast, as are single-engine turboprops. And based on VRA valuations, the top three most desired piston aircraft are, get this, the Cessna 182, the 172, and the mighty A36 Bonanza. You can check out VRA aircraft prices on our website if you're an AOPA member. And by the way, a 1970s era 172 would set you back about $90,000 if you can find one. So Alyssa, makes me feel bad that I sold my 1977 172 <laughs> for about $43,000. Okay, granted, that was 20 years ago, but uh, when I now see that they're going for $90,000, pretty impressive. That is. yeah. Now, I mean, you could always put your bonanza up, although I don't see you ever parting mm -hmm. with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'm going to hang on to a bonanza for a while. Yeah. Well, the AOPA Air Safety Institute is testing out a controversial proposal the impossible turn back to the runway in the event of an engine failure shortly after takeoff. The ASI team took four different aircraft, a Super Cub, an RV-4, a Bonanza, and a Cessna 172, and put them to the test. Now, it's the subject of their latest video, Reality Check, the runway behind you. With stall numbers and expected turn back altitude requirements freshly established, we each flew three profiles in near perfect conditions. Cool, sunny morning, light winds, and low density altitude on a simulated 4,000 foot long runway. The plan was to climb between VX and VY with full power to the predetermined altitude, cut power to idle, delay three seconds to simulate a startle period, then push to best glide while entering a 45 degree bank turn back to the runway. I went first in the Super Cup. ASI Senior Vice President Richard McSpadden says the experiment was prompted by a real-world high-profile crash. Earlier this year, there was an accident in Pembroke Pines, Florida, where a Bonanza A36 appeared to, it appears as if he attempted to make a turn back, meaning an engine failure on takeoff, and attempted the impossible turn, turning back to the runway, landing in the opposite direction. We knew that would ignite some debate around the impossible turn, so we decided to go out and try the impossible turn in a few different platforms. How'd they do? 
Well, you can find out this Friday when the video goes live on the Air Safety Institute's website. That's airsafetyinstitute.org. Well, let us help. That's the message AOPA and other aviation stakeholders sent to the Departments of Transportation and Defense about rolling out real-time information about special use airspace. AOPA and others who signed this letter think the industry is in the best position to come up with the solution as to how. Companies like Garmin and ForeFlight may be able to easily roll out a solution. The FAA and DOD are talking about how to accomplish it, and we think aviation can get it done. The National Defense Authorization Act requires that real-time status of SUA and military operations area be sent to pilots' cockpits. The AOPA championed effort provides aviators with real-time status of MOAs and restricted areas pushed directly into the cockpit. Now, this will result in enormous savings and environmental benefits for operators of private, commercial, and military aircraft. Well, when you think of multi-engine trainers, modern and efficient are, well, not the words you usually use to describe them. Most multi-trainers at the local flight school are worn out old Piper Aztecs, maybe a Seminole, uh, and they both have big Avgas-sucking engines. Well, the Technum P2006T is a newer entry to the twin trainer market. AOPA technical editor Jill Tallman has a story about what makes the Technum twin unique. When you compare this new Italian airplane to the old American twins, the most notable difference is the engines. The P2006T is powered by Rotax 912 S3s, and the airplane is gaining traction in the flight training market. My favorite thing about it is just the ease of operation and the, the, the little, the Rotaxes do such, they're so reliable and they're quiet. It's really a nice, quiet twin trainer. The engines sip just nine gallons an hour total and they can burn Avgas or Mogas, so the Technum is much more affordable to operate. The main advantage is the operating cost and I would also say the other big advantage is the ease of the transition. You know, uh, an Aztec or, or even a Duchess will have either, you know, 250 or 180 horsepower aside. This has got 100 aside, so it's much more docile doing the single engine work. And so it makes for an easier transition for students. The airplane is also set up well to teach students on a commercial airline track. This is a very well logically laid out cockpit. It's got the, I would say, a similar feel to an airliner. This example has a standard six-pack with a Garmin GTN 750 Navigator, but Garmin G1000 NXI Avionics are an option. In the air, the P2006T is light on the controls, yet noticeable control pressure changes point to the fact that this is indeed a larger airplane. Cruise speed is 150 knots and range is 650 nautical miles. The airplane has four seats, but useful load is somewhat limited for a twin. The airplane is not exactly new on the market. It was certified in the United States in 2010, but it is meeting the demand for affordability, efficiency, and performance. Jill Tallman, AOPA Live. You can read more about the Technum Twin in the upcoming July issue of AOPA Pilot Magazine. Play coming up, how can you take action against a proposed $1,000 landing fee? And Turtles Fly 2 will be back in a snap. I'm a full-time filmmaker and I integrate a lot of flying in with that and primarily produce film and videos around aviation. So I've got about 1,700 hours, about maybe three or 400 of that is dual given. My ratings are a commercial airplane single engine land, and then I'm a CFII and just recently got my tailwheel. So I use Sirius XM weather hands down all the time on four flight. We were doing performance testing off the coast of Florida and we needed unrestricted climbs with no clouds above us and we needed unrestricted descents, no clouds below us. And we actually used the cloud layer that Sirius XM feeds to the iPad and it was shockingly accurate. I really tend to gravitate toward using Sirius XM in the cockpit because of the resolution of data that it's providing me. I mean, when I'm looking at NEXRAD or weather on the horizon or, or satellite cloud layers, anything like that, the resolution of the image that it's giving me is so much higher and so much more frequent than ADS-B, especially when you're operating in an IFR environment. Well, welcome back. 
So, Tom, uh, you're at the Aviation Museum of Kentucky. Can you tell us a little bit about it, what you're doing there, what it's like? Absolutely. Yeah, we're in Lexington, as I said earlier, like Lexington, Kentucky, Aviation Museum of Kentucky. And it's a fascinating place, opened in 1995. And uh, their emphasis is on kids and uh, teaching kids about aviation and the opportunities. What most people didn't know, don't know, and I didn't know until uh, I got down here, is that uh, Kentucky is the number two state uh, for economic impact relative to aviation and aerospace. I wouldn't have thought that. Washington State, of course, is first. Uh, with Boeing and all the other things going on up there. But anyhow, it's an impressive museum, and I'll be talking more about it in a, in a segment we'll do next week. Great. Looking forward to it. Well, the FAA has released a final rule that requires air carriers and other operators to report their pilots' employment history, training, and qualifications in an electronic database. Operators seeking to hire pilots must review database records on applicants. Now, IOP has been actively engaged with this issue since it was first proposed. We were focusing especially on assuring that the database did not place burdens on general aviation operators, and for the most part, that was successful. You can read the full details on our website. Well, now you may remember the absurd $1,000 landing fee proposed in Massachusetts. AOPA is calling mem on members of the state to speak out against this farce of a proposal. And we encourage you to contact the sponsor of the bill that would charge a $1,000, quote, climate mitigation landing fee on private, corporate, and charter aircraft using Bay State airports and insist that he pull back the broadly panned measure from consideration. Now, the measure was proposed by State Senator Julian Sear. His contact information is right there on your screen. You can let him know how valuable general aviation is to the state and the safety impacts this could have if enacted. Now, we don't expect it to pass, but the bill is presently before the Joint Committee on Transportation. It would devastate the $24.7 billion that aviation adds to the Massachusetts economy each year and likely cost 200,000 jobs. Well, hey, if you're like me, and I know I am, you're ready for a vacation. How about a flycation? We've got a list of ideas for places to go in your airplane on our website. From the Wright Brothers National Monument to the Grand Canyon, there are many wonderful destinations that are perfect to fly to with the family. You could even win some great prizes. The pilot passport feature of the AOPA app is offering a June summer flycation challenge. Just check into the landmarks on the app to be entered. Find all the details on our website. And speaking of flying around the country, 18-year-old Ben Templeton is going to fly to all 48 of the lower states in a J3 Cub. He's doing it to raise awareness about Triple Tree Aerodrome in South Carolina. Ben departed Triple Tree on Tuesday, actually just ahead of our visit there. We'll have a story about the trip next week. Until then, you can follow his journey and support the trip at benflies.com. And finally, we like to remind people that General Aviation serves America. And one of the ways volunteer GA pilots serve is in rescuing endangered species. AOPA Live's Warren Morningstar has more. Yep, turtles fly too. It's amazing how today makes a person feel. Each and every one of the people on this beach will never forget this. These turtles flew all the way from Massachusetts to this North Carolina beach. Well, they flew in Chiquita banana boxes in General Aviation airplanes, all part of the Turtles Fly 2 fleet. Turtles Fly 2 is pretty much a emergency response organization that transports using general aviation pilots and aircraft endangered species and whatever comes up. So we've done humanitarian aid and um, hurricane relief. More than 300 pilots have volunteered their aircraft and time to endangered species and other humanitarian missions. Today, these pilots are helping 34 highly endangered Ridley's Camp sea turtles get back to the sea. Now, the turtles were cold stunned and couldn't migrate south when they should have. They get caught in the colder waters and they end up being frozen to a degree that lowers their body temperatures. And as they're trying to work their way back south to the warmer waters, the armpit of the Cape Cod area tends to draw them into the beaches. So you have volunteers that 
end up combing those beaches for them every day at every tide change, pick them up off the beach and transport them to the new Mass um, New England Aquarium and National Marine Life Center. More turtles than they can take care of, really. So turtles fly to volunteer pilots, fly them to other recovery centers, or like today, for release back into the wild. And these pilots are helping ensure the survival of the species. Cold stunning is a natural occurrence, um, but uh, it's, it's one of those threats that we can respond to and help with. And so generally, if you can help with threats that we can manage, that should alleviate the impacts of threats that we have less ability to manage. So overall, it should help, we hope. It means a lot to the turtles and to the pilots. Ed, Phil, and Jerry flew boxes of turtles in his Seneca. It just warms my heart. It's one of the greatest things I do and uh, makes me so happy to be helping an endangered species. Kirk Fisher's Bonanza proved to be another capable turtle transporter. This is all worth it. It's just absolutely great. It's fun to see, uh, very exciting, very rewarding. Warren Morningstar, AOPA Live. If you're interested in volunteering for Turtles Fly 2, visit their website to learn more. And take note, they need pilots in all parts of the country. Well, Tom, those were some awfully cute turtles. I can't wait to see what's next. We've transported cats and dogs last week and turtles this week. Yeah, that is, uh, that is quite a collection. Uh, we'll see what next week's amphibian might be, right? <laughs> right. Well, that's our program for the week. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to send us a note on the address on your screen. Or down below if you're with us on YouTube. No matter where you watch us, we thank you. We'll see you next time. There are many important things to consider before purchasing an aircraft. Let the experts at Aerospace Reports help guide you through the process. We combine expert knowledge with our long-standing commitment to personalized customer service to perfect your transaction. Learn more at aerospacereports.com.